Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. Thanks, man. Thanks. I never thank you for introducing me. For, for like saying, hey, welcome. Oh, yeah, but I didn't introduce you, actually. You've got to introduce yourself. I just said that I'm I, happy to be here. Okay. <laughs> you are here every week. And I am thrilled. Okay. Um, so this I'm is Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, yeah. Um, today, uh, we're at our new space. We're at the new place. Pop, in a pop, great pop, pop, room. Pop, 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 pop. We're in a big old room. And... Uh, that work. Yeah, I'm I moved. That's the big story. Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> the rumors are true. Um we tried to make it look as much like the old place as possible. We have the ramen blanket. We very almost didn't. Yeah, and then that was a remembered. Risk. And uh yeah, there's a lot of boxes in the background, but you know how moving is. Hey man, same couch, same blanket, same bad posture on my part. We're same committed, boys. Contributing all the value. I think that bad we posture on my part as well. Like I should not be hunched over as much as I am. Well, we've, we're covering all the bases. Yeah. You got the hunch, I got the legs up. Yeah, we need like a um, an ergonomic specialist, you know, that, that come into <laughs> companies and like tell their employees how to sit. Uh, oh, like, like a Jordan Belfort type of a posture. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That'd be, that'd be cool. Isn't... Gordon Gecko just like yelling. Wait, this is actually... Is this going to be my thing? I mean, okay, cute. in fairness, you now are the guy who gets all of the comments about sitting. But in the first video that we did, coming back, I was also sitting in fun ways. Okay. Hey, hey, it's not, what? I want it too. Okay. Am I, I'm, be, I'm in trouble for being a sweetie now. That's fair, I guess. Okay. Mm. For all being right. myself. Um, <laughs> happy birthday, Jordan. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you so much, dude. Happy birthday to you as well. Thank Just you. Just two young men. Two young men. Young, vibrant. We're finally allowed to drive. Whimsical enough to bring their legs onto the couch. and Actually, you're still not allowed to drive. Nope, not at all. Um, <laughs> On account of no license. Yeah. Uh, and you're so young. Oh, sorry. That's it. Yeah. That yeah. Was, I can't rent a car or whatever. So speaking of renting a car, we, for our joint birthday, yes, our birthday is the same day. It's not a bit. I got lots of DMs asking if we were serious. Yeah, nice try. You know. Yeah, whatever. it's two years apart. If that helps. It, it like... wasn't like the same day, same year. We are two years apart, but it was the same day, May fifth. That's our birthday. Um, and it I think is an important part of uh, when we met and we're like, oh, we have too many similarities, mm -hmm. and then we found out we had the same birthday. We were both sat in the old patreon office doing like a soy jack face Just yeah like, oh. i remember there's this photo of you in a blue shirt playing a guitar with legs <laughs> crossed and i sent it to anastasia and i was like he likes uh hollywood handbook <laughs> and then you were like anastasia from hollywood handbook yeah dude yeah i don't miss anastasia's here right now off off camera but you Boy. can't see her it's fun. It is like a bizarre i wish we'd <laughs> i could find like a transcript of that conversation because it is a lot of like I don't think sad boys would exist without us discovering just a bunch of sudden like, whoa, what? Yeah. Hey, come on. Huh? For real? Because we would, we later became coworkers, but we weren't, you know, we didn't work in the same team, even the same yeah. side of the org, even the same portion of the office. No, I feel like, um, I've probably told this on the podcast before, but you were proposed to me as a person who existed uh, under, under you were pitched to me as British Jarvis by our friend Jamie. Um, and she was like, you got to come work at Patreon. We have British Jarvis. And I was like, oh, why would I want there to be a British version of me? Do I replace him? Yeah. And I also like, that sounds racist. <laughs> it's um, fine. Oh, dude, I, we can't talk about it really. But there is a person in our lives now, kind of a friend of a friend. Yeah. That mixes us up yeah, every time we that see was, them. And that happens more often than you'd think in our lives. People used to mix us up at Patreon. And I think it's because we like, happy birthday. Yeah. No way. <laughs> no way. You're right. It's a stop clock is right twice a day. Um, but it's it was our birthday this past Friday. And, uh, yes. and we... Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. As a little bit of a surprise... We went to Canada. We went to Toronto um, under a secret plan to surprise our good friend Curtis Connor for his birthday, being May 5th, May, May the 4th. Sorry, May the 4th be with you. And well, yeah, Curtis is one day before me, to yeah, be fair, as yeah. far as weird birthday time. Same care. year, yeah. And, and we look the same. And you look the same. Have I ever told you how I posted photos of my new haircut 
and people were like, you look like Curtis Connor. And I was like, what are you talking about? Did you have a mustache? In a mullet? No, I didn't. Huh. It was weird. That's and refreshing. I got it multiple times. <laughs> it is different. <laughs> I got it multiple times to the point where I sent it to Curtis and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> What's yeah. going on? What's going on? I was uh, fired for doing some bullshit. Yeah. California. Media, <laughs> media is in the trash can. And I'll tell you, <laughs> it's not good. I've lived it. Um, <laughs> I'm sensitive. Uh, I was fired for being myself. Shout outs. The news is fake. And so am I. <laughs> um, I got those uh, implants to give me biceps. <laughs> I'm a big, strong boy. Uh, <laughs> he should pivot into being a small bean. That should be the new Tucker Carlson era. Um, I'm a small bean. I'm just a little cutie. And this is why what the left is afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the smallest bean. They're jealous. And they're jealous. Of me being a cutie sweetie pie. They're infringing on Americans' rights to be small beans. To do a toy hole or do an <laughs> unboxing of a bunch of small toys. Is that what small bean people do? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, we surprised Curtis. It was very cute. Um, also Danny surprised Curtis. So it was like this two pronged thing where, um, Danny of Danny Gonzalez, uh, <laughs> um, arrived in Toronto secretly because we were coordinating with Jenna. So there was like a big group chat between, between Jordan, myself, Jenna and, uh, Danny. And so Danny was arriving early in the day and then he surprised Curtis. And then I saw the video, like Jenna sent me the video and he's like, Whoa, dude. Yeah, dude. yeah. Danny's like sitting at their dining table, kind of doing a Danny Gonzalez face. And Curtis hits him with the most expressive Curtis gets. Yeah. Jenna was like, Curtis Whoa. doesn't like he doesn't show much emotion and then shows the video. And she's like, but he was so happy and surprised. And the videos are going, Whoa, man. He's so and like his wording is very emotional. And he's oh, like, yeah. wow, I love you. This is amazing. Wow. But just Whoa. No, yeah, it feels like it's a bit, but it's very earnest. He yeah, he's just Whoa, uh, what's what the fuck, man? What the like, fuck? What the fuck? Cause that's what happened. So so Danny surprised him and then Do you um, think people, even audio listeners can picture the Curtis like has a, a physical motion when he hits you with the word? Whoa. whoa. It's like the servos in his back are like yeah, shifting, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um he Danny surprised him and it was very cute. And then that evening we arrived from the airport um, and showed up and I knocked real hard on the door. Like I was a bad guy. <laughs> like I was Billy Eilish's bad guy from the song. So it's based on you. Yeah. It's based on me knocking a little on prankster. Curtis's door. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little prankster and a bad man. And I'm a bad man. <laughs> I'm a bad man. Duh. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, he was like, what the fuck? What What's the going hell, on? Guys? He like looked back at Jenna and Jenna was like filming him. <laughs> um, Jump. <laughs> yeah, it was a great time. And then uh, Curtis and Jenna were just like the, the nicest hosts. Unreasonably great hosts. Jenna cooked incredible dinners twice. Mm -hmm. um, Curtis made us espresso. Curtis made us espresso. Uh, we learned that there is a Canadian version of DiGiorno mm -hmm. called like this, deli Delicio Dasani's or something, or something like that. Yeah. This own, it's not. It's not delivery. It's Deliso. It's not takeout going to your house. It's Dislolo. D <laughs> yeah. Dislocate. Yeah. I had no idea that there was. What's that whistling sound? We have uh, Some a big <laughs> open door and like the birds, the birds are singing. As, the birds are squealing actually. As serene as it is, you know. Um, can we look up while we're here? The, the. DiGiorno versus Delicio or whatever. Yeah. Huh. D Delicio. What could, we did check. It is the same company. It's the same company. It's literally one of those like Hardee's versus Carl Jr. Checkers versus Rallies. What's another one? Uh, TK Maxx versus TJ Maxx. TK Maxx? UK one, yeah. That's insane. As to what, <laughs> what reason? Not sure which is the first one. Don't see any rationale for it. I thought TJ Maxx was a person. But before we get into that, let's have a word from today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is an app that lets you control what private information of yours is shared on the internet. 
There's lots of information about you that can be found online. There are data brokers out there that profit off of selling this information uh, to spammers, scammers, robocallers, telemarketers, and pretty much anyone who wants your information. By signing up to Aura, you'll be able to identify those scammers and those data brokers that have managed to access your information and take action on stopping them from messing up all your, 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 your good business. Just today, they gave me a notification about my data being involved in a breach. If your data is caught up in a breach and someone is trying to access it, then Aura will give you recommendations and plans on what to do in response. That's true. Aura's app also contains a VPN, a password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, parental controls, and it protects your devices from malware. So go ahead and let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. Hop on over to Aura.com slash sadboys. That's, that's us. Uh, for a 14-day free trial and find out what people are doing with your information. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back. Let's go back to it. I thought TJ Maxx was a person. I feel like what? this is my Shane Dawson moment what? where I'm like, I thought Trader Joe <laughs> made the food. What market research could have resulted in? Yeah, Americans like the letter J actually a hell of yeah. a lot more than K. <laughs> yeah, our surveys suggested that we should shift to the next letter in the alphabet. Um, no longer l letter number 10, J. We have to <laughs> move on to K. It is like, it, yeah, I mean, it's literally like uh, this just doesn't hit right. It stands for the kingdom. That's why. Oh, the kingdom, Max. kingdom Max. <laughs> Shout out to the king, dude. Thanks, dude. Thank you so much. Well, no, the oh. Burger King. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, which Burger did you know is... in Japan? No, just kidding. It's it's Burger King everywhere. <laughs> but <laughs> um, the burger, bro. It's hundred hungry jacks in Australia. It's hungry oh, jacks hungry in jacks. Australia. Anastasia just told us. What, TK Maxx is? <laughs> yeah, TK Maxx is Hungry, Hungry Jacks. That's Hungry why it rags. Um, I went over to Hungry Jacks and grabbed a uh, Element skateboard t-shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, for too much money or not enough? Yeah, <laughs> it, it was marked wrong. down from $100 to $12. <laughs> um, I just hit up Hot Topic the other day. I was trying to find like a silly like Stewie Griffin t-shirt as possible. Right. Little pricey. Oh, yeah. A little pricier than I, I thought Hot Topic would be for, you know, like a Demon Slayer sweatpants. Yeah. I mean, when you're buying high fashion, you've got to pay high That's fashion true. prices. Yeah. I guess I don't I don't know the industry, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Stewie demands a premium. <laughs> yeah. I should have gone for an American I demand dad. a premium. If it was an American As a dad baby. character or Cleveland show, I probably could have got a discount. I promised Loretta I would get intimate <laughs> with her tonight. I'm just doing all my family I guy made impressions. my own show. <laughs> I've got a show and I'm voiced by a white guy. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> the problem with Cleveland. Fortunately, we found a black dude who sounds like this also. So The we, show was canceled before we were. <laughs> um... Anyway, um, oh no, he's stuck. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I'm, I'm in pain. Kill I'm me, in, kill me before uh, I get canceled. We scared our good friend. Um, oh, speaking of brands that are different, Kit Kat behavior. Oh, yeah, what in the world? So, we ate a lot of Kit Kat bars in Canada, and I don't know why this happened. I don't know if it's a Canadian delicacy or what. But our first Kit Kat was, where do we eat the first Kit Kat? Uh, we, uh, uh, oh, I got it from just like a corner store. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Jordan was just like at a corner store and he's like, I got a Kit Kat. You want it? I wanted to go to, to Timmy Horton's, but it was closed. Right. And so then I ate the Kit Kat and it was very good. It was special. It felt like it was made with real, I don't know, elbow grease or whatever. It, it felt like it was made by Hot, by yeah. uh, K Cat himself. Yeah, it was actually J Cat. In, oh yeah, TJ Cat. <laughs> yeah, uh, in, they taste like UK ones. Mm. It used to be my favorite candy. Then moved back to the US. Yeah. What the fucking? What's going on? I don't know. See, I I'm not a. I can't judge a Kit Kat in America because I've only known American Kit Kats, so I I like them, but they do taste different. Like the the ones in Canada definitely tasted better, and this is like a European chocolate thing too. Mm. And not that Canada's in Europe, but like. You know, how, like I mean, people talk yeah, about, know, you know, they, they want to be. It's like America's stepson. Yeah. But, uh, Europe has kind of thrown all its stuff. Canada in wants to be European real bad. Yeah. Nice they, try. Yeah. We, we like literally got, um, we rented a car and we're dry. I'm like driving on the highway. And then Jordan points out that the highway signs or the highway numbers 
have little crowns. Mm-hmm. They're in the shape of little crowns. Yeah, they're like, in the shape of little crowns. They're like f- five. On I it. mentioned it to our chaperones, Jenna and Curtis, and they were like, "Oh, really?" Yeah, they didn't just, notice. Wow, you're so indoctrinated. Yeah, they didn't know. Yeah, it's kind of like if you mention how many American flags are at the yeah uh, or eagles are at any airport, any customs. In the U.S. is like, welcome home to good old-fashioned America. Dude, like, yeah, like an animated flag background behind an eagle. Mm -hmm. You know what? Actually, one of the first things I noticed after I moved here fucking whatever, you know, seven, eight years ago or whatever, the very first thing I noticed is that on, like, terrestrial TV where you actually get ads or um, medical ads, especially because I don't even think legally you're allowed to advertise branded medicine in the U.K. um, Oh, right. I've heard that. Because it's insane to do that. There is... Oh, 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 Sam Pick, you know, you know, they, they make bangers here. Uh, they make bangers for, for uh, miracle drugs. Oh, Sam Pick should never be used by anyone in the whole world. Yeah, yeah, will, yeah. It'll make your arms and legs fall off. And don't make, make sure <laughs> Ask your it. doctor before trying Ozempic, as it will kill you for sure. Yeah, hope that they say no, because you I think Ozempic is like the new Hollywood weight loss drug, where oh. it's like, it's used, it's supposed to be for people with diabetes, I think. And um, oh, it has an actual medical. It has function, an actual medical thing, but then people were like, "Hold on, this suppresses counter? your no, no, oh, no." Right. So there's like a black market, and there's also a shortage. I don't know very much about this. Mm. I was just hearing about it on the news. I'm curious. There is a. Uh, it's it's just kind of crazy how much parodies of the U.S. line up. Mm. Like the idea of an actual contemporary ad where it'd be like, "In this country of freedom." And modernity, you can buy medicine that makes you more powerful than you could ever possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. Have you ever wanted to be yourself? Or oh, political ads? I was you. you the The phrasing of that started like a political. political ad. I thought it was going to be like this crazy. was paid for by the Big Kit Kat Corporation. I mean, whatever. that's definitely not a thing. Surely that's illegal in the UK because I've never seen a political ad before. But the po- way political ads are phrased is like. Do people not see how funny this is? Is it not just Jordan Adika believes that babies should like uh, get punched. <laughs> Every baby should be a gamer. Vote for the patriot who <laughs> loves babies. This was paid for by Jarvis for babies. <laughs> the thing I said about the babies was a lie. Jordan Adika doesn't <laughs> yeah, believe yeah. that. Actually, yeah. When you look at the context, it's like vi- live video of Jarvis punching babies, despite having a political ad that says the contrary. Jarvis <laughs> is actually a victim of the thing that he rallies against. Jarvis. And then everybody's like, I don't believe it. Nice try. Nice pal. try. I, I know Jarvis. He's like a guy I'd ever <laughs> be with. He would never punch a baby. I don't care that there's a video of it. Hey, New Yorkers stick together. Look, I've seen chat GPT. I know you can fake this stuff. Anything can be fake these days. Hey, you seen that? Uh, you seen the uh, ex machina? Huh? Yeah. Imagine if that happened. There was a robot. Yeah. And a billionaire. It's kind of like Elon Musk. It's not real, you said? May as well but be. you can imagine a world where it's that's the you ultimate comeback from and hey, those guys now. Whenever they make the robot that you can have sex with, I'm there. I'm in. But it's unethical. But I'm in. But I'm in. <laughs> Count me in. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> give, me, oh. give me a computer I can kiss. Come on all over here. <laughs> it's <just, laughs> like a reflex for them. Come on all over here. Come on over here. A Domino's. A Disoni. I'm at all. <laughs> Is it called Disoni? Delicio. It's not delivery. <laughs> it's delicio. You it, have to say it with like a weird Italian accent like I'm doing it. Is it? It's not delicio. delivery. It's, it's not delivery. It's, it's DiGiorno. Pizza, right? It's not delivery. It's frozen pizza, right? Oh, That's okay. what they say. Oh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, it's DiGiorno, um, which I thought was like the fanciest shit in the world when I was a kid. It's a great name. Very good. It's a great name. It still hits. It's not, not wrong with it. I had some. I it's had great. It's great. D- uh, hold on. Huh? The Autobahn? This Autobahn, yo. Yes. Optimus. Donde está el baño? Hey, the Starscream. <laughs> Starscream? That's a Transformer, no? Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, man. Um, oh, and he's a Decepticon, sorry. I'm revealing myself as a bad dude. Wait, what did you say? Were you ever into Transformers? No. In any format? Not really. I think I watched some of the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Never really the movies. I saw, like, maybe one of the Shia LaBeouf movies. Thought it was cool. Oh wow! Yeah, I completely forgot about that portion. You should watch the uh, Mark Wahlberg ones because the first they it did is, he take over for Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, in the fourth and fifth movie, I think. Jesus, there's so many. The fi- the fifth he is a knight <laughs> and he has a sword, uh, but maybe that's the fourth one. Who knows? Who cares? But he is to have written a character that's so unlikable because even if you have an annoying protagonist, if they're capable, at least they can be a little bit like compelling. Right. He's bad at everything that he does. Uh-huh. He's really mean. Oh. He's really like unpleasant to his employees and people in his life. 
And the only B plot that he's involved in is her, his daughter's boyfriend. She is 17 years old and his daughter's boyfriend who is over 18 is pre- literally in a scene presents Mark Wahlberg with documentation proving that they're allowed to have sex according to like some weird archaic state specific law called like the Romeo and Juliet law. I feel like I saw a clip on Twitter of this. And it has nothing to do with the movie. That's at all. so weird. It just feels like a Michael Bay being like, by the way, <laughs> just in case anybody, it's actually cool. Yeah. It's like Jerry Seinfeld dating that, like going to prom with that oh 18 year old God, or 17 year old or whatever. She's uh, her brain's older. Yeah. She's beautiful. What am I? Does I hear Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, he, you know how he opens SNL. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <And> musical guest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, musical guest. Kramer, <laughs> TJ Maxx. <laughs> oh, dude, it does sound like an SNL like writer. <laughs> Mommy Moynihan. <laughs> <laughs> A ghost. DiGiorno's. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Delicio. <laughs> I like Delicio more. Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the cursed, like, um, oh, wait, man. Justin Roiland. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Um, <laughs> Dr. <Spacey>. Han. <laughs> <laughs> the good doctor. <laughs> the bad doctor. <laughs> House. <laughs> I'm so excited that Good Doctor's in the in the zeitgeist right now. Really. Um, yeah. What the hell is going on with that? Uh, for people who don't know, The Good Doctor is a very funny, unintentionally very funny show <laughs> created by the creator of one of my favorite shows, House, which really yeah. sticks. Really doesn't feel good. Kind of crazy that. Yeah, because they have different vibes from the clips I've seen on Twitter. <laughs> uh, the, the, yeah. So here's the thing that I. <laughs> You actually have to be pretty, uh, you have to be a Rick and Morty type smart guy fan to know this. Uh, That that makes sense. And be keeping up with the Rick and Morty news. Has anything happened? Uh, No, I think it's, it's, it's keep on keeping on and it's stronger than ever. Justice. (laughs) Right. Uh, There is, I genuinely didn't know this until we were watching the pilot for the second or third time in the last 48 hours last night. What? Me and Ethan, we just can't stop laughing. It's on Hulu. Shout outs. Shout outs Hulu. There is... It's based on a K-drama. The Good Doctor is. A like 20 episode K-drama. Oh. And the the premise being that it's a, a, an autistic savant that becomes a surgeon. And he, I don't know, I don't know how to say this. The first episode is an A plot about him helping a kid that gets injured at the airport. And it okay. feels like a different show that is going on. The <laughs> team shooting that literally, it looks different, feels different. <laughs> it is cut and spliced like within the episode. Right. So it feels like it's going on for a, it's way too long. Like it's okay. crazy how long he's helping a child very <laughs> slowly. Cause it keeps cutting back to scenes where the board of directors is meeting with his like paternal figure who trained him and got him into medical school or whatever. Toby from the West Wing. And it's just scene after scene of them making some pretty yikes claims about like what autism is, oh. how it works or whatever. And, you know, doing the kind of classic trope of, yeah, he has the mind of a child, but he's got powers, you know, like that oh, the classic. Isn't there a different show about like an attorney who's got OCD or something great like that? attorney. Oh, wait. Yeah, there's a new one coming out. Like, isn't it by the same By creator? David Shaw, yet yeah. again. Why does he keep lawyer. doing that? The good, the, it's no called The way. Good Lawyer. Oh, my God. Also played by Freddie Highmore. That would be so funny. Um. So... We've actually got some clips, some of the clips that have been going viral on Twitter of The Good Doctor. For those who are not familiar, I do want to now teach you. It's played by Freddie Highmore, who was in, I want to say, The Spiderwick Chronicles. He's That's a British a actor. Oh, this guy is? Yeah, he was a child. He was like a very Wait, successful Wait, so they did the house actor. thing where they're like, let's get a British actor and make him American. Work the first time. Work the first time. <laughs> I uh, I would be curious. I, I'm sure there's a discourse about it online right now, but I would be curious to know what uh, different autistic people's experience of this show has been. Right. Because pretty unanimously, I've seen that it's insulting. Yeah. Because he's kid coded. That's like how. Right. They've, they've right. Represented well, him. I mean, like, there's a f- quite a few clips that I love. Um. Oh, we. I should say. Oh, by the way, I don't know if we'll how late in the show we'll get, but we watched episode one. We watched uh-huh. the pilot, me and Ethan, uh, the last couple of days, we watched it a couple of times. And then we jumped all the way to the latest episode. The show's and over and it's been off the air for a while, right? 
Uh, no, last one came out last week. Oh, fuck. I think it's still kicking. Wait, this is big for them, It's then. very popular. It's like an extremely popular show. Yeah, it's. I was saying to Anastasia earlier, it's like... Um, it's kind of like young Sheldon where you don't know like a real human being that watches mm-hmm. it, but it's inexplicably the most popular yeah. show in the young world. Young Rock. Huh? I didn't even think that had come out. That's real? That's out and has been for a while. And That's does, like, pretty crazy, well. dude. Or or just one of those like crime shows called like CSI Night Midnight on, on in a car. I want to- We only look at midnight crimes. I want to look at the, and also the car talks. <laughs> it's Knight Rider, kind of. Oh, yeah, there There's is. a really funny one that, like, so Daniel Day Kim is Dr. Han, and apparently he just plays this role for a few episodes. Daniel Day Kim is one of my favorite characters on the TV show Lost. Oh, that's right. And so, one of the things that went viral is this clip from Lost. <laughs> The Good Doctor series finale is insane. The surgeon plants a bomb on Dr. Han's boat and then it explodes, fucking killing him. What a fitting conclusion to this epic rivalry. Lost spoilers, by the way. (laughs) Also, fun fact about Lost. So, Daniel DeKim's character, um, uh, Jin is his name. Son and Jin, I think. Yeah. Um, He's a surgeon. His character uh, only speaks Korean the entire time, and he actually didn't know Korean. And so Yoon Jin Kim, his co-star, like helped him with like his his lines because they were like this couple that like was this Korean couple that like didn't oh, really right. speak English. Um, Same thing happened in Heroes. Do you know that? Did it? Yeah, uh, Hiro Nakamura's co-star Ando is actually a Korean actor that had to learn Japanese to play his role. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. I know the, heroes. I the, did watch all the show. It's very bad. The thing I was going to say about that was that in the comments of that lost one, they were like the good doctor swam all the way to his boat to like plant the bomb. And the <laughs> repl- the top reply was, I am a sturgeon. <laughs> um, which I thought was I awesome. Was, is this the clip? I think this is the clip. No, God damn it. It's crazy because this is like... That's the original Korean one. It's like two years... Like, this is a two-year-old clip, so this has been a thing for so long. This is, to some people, an extremely important show. People love this show. It's like the, one of the most popular shows on ABC. We can build to you having more responsibility. No. <laughs> I'm a surgeon. <laughs> So I'm gonna give you one last chance to maintain your dignity and leave my office. I am a surgeon! I am a surgeon! I am, I am a surgeon! It's like incredible that the clips weren't without context. Like we watched the full context of that scene and it's as wild as the actual TikTok is. It's capital A acting. It's like Meryl Streep peak intensity screaming yeah. or whatever. The I know that there's I'm I'm sure there's some people that connect with <laughs> like say some of his like vocal takes and some of his uh, some parts of the presentation of his performance. I'm, it, it takes all kinds, right? Like it's not going to be no one, but it's worth noting that I think his performance is a little fetishized. If you check mm-hmm. the IMDb, it has a kind of a weird number of awards. Mm. from mostly things like Critics' Choice. It's I not see. necessarily like the, the the Globes, but it's real, real awards. Okay. Uh, and he, having watched the, I watched like most of the first season when it was first coming out because I liked House. I'm like, maybe if I keep giving it a try. Right. Oh, it's being bad still. What do yeah. you know? Yeah. The, the latest episode, jumping to that, I don't know when in the canon, at least a couple of years, I guess, ago. It's almost sad what they're allowing him to now get away with. Oh. In the latest episode, he is having a kid. That's like what's happening. Okay. She, uh, his his partner is in the hospital and her water's breaking and so and so. She is infantilizing him as well. Oh. It's so, I imagine it's so frustrating for some people to watch this show because it is like the worst, most patronizing interpretation of how autism works. Yeah. Plus, Freddie Highmore is getting away with crime, bro. He's just, every single line has so much like affect on it yeah it's, it's not it's always monotone it's always you know etc but then he's also i don't know how to describe it uh you're wrong to be doing that with the patient oh. that's every line yeah and it's this everyone that talks to him is either a bully who no shit his boss at the end of the first episode who was otherwise really nice to him they're doing surgery sean just saved a child 
And it's almost like the show goes, oh, we're out of conflict. Um, 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 hey, you, during a surgery, the main surgeon turned to him while you're cutting someone open and just go, by the way, you'll, I'll never let you be a real surgeon in this hospital. It's wild. What? It's one of the worst shows I've ever seen. That's crazy. I mean, the thing is, like, we have to, like, obviously, like, the reason that you can make fun of this is because it's like this extremely successful show that has this portrayal that, you know, people with autism have critiqued and criticized. Yeah, it's it's capitalizing on a very poor representation of Yeah, autism. yeah, yeah. And so like obviously we're not experts there, but uh based on other sources. Yeah, exactly. But this is the this clip made me laugh a lot. Um <laughs> because if it, 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 why does the good doctor walk like C3PO? <laughs> and then you just look at how he moves. How far apart are the contractions? About two minutes. Uh, yep, I okay. It is time to start <laughs> pushing. <laughs> That's actually wild. He moves like a really impressive it marionette. Is, like it's I, very, ad the puppetry I is mean, really impressive. I have autistic friends. Their arms move independently of one another. Yeah, they and I like mean, like, I, I can't, not that my friends are representative of the entire spectrum, obviously, but, like, it's just so, I don't know. It just feels, yeah, it's it's so, like, um, turned up. What's the word? Like, you used, you said it already. Or, like, affected. Affe yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it seems a lot like, because the, the, the reporting on it has just been, like, Mm, there doesn't appear to have been any research on the mm. side of the performance, just like a lot of interpretation. And it the part that really does like unironically piss me off is the the way every other character interacts with them. Mm -hmm. You are either mean and insane. Like the yeah. things they're saying are like, oh, you would go to jail for harassing yeah. an employee like this. Or they are just, oh wait, I should say, there's also extras, you know, whenever there's a, Oh, I'm Jimmy McGlimmy with this is my one extra right. credit or whatever. And they are the uh, the patient in an episode. Yeah. And he'll walk in and just be like, we need to do a blood transfusion. And we'll go, what in the, what the heck? This is my doctor. Oh, I can't, okay. I can't believe it. Yeah. And then the third type of character is his friends that are just like, okay. Okay, little buddy. Hey, don't get too emotional now. You know, it's I just so want. Like, is it too much to like, there have to be actors with autism who, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just feels like one of those things where I'm like, you're never going to like it. Maybe this isn't a way to flex in your ability to act. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like one of very few scenarios where a studio might actually cast somebody with autism right. and they didn't, uh, by all accounts, I've not heard anything about that. But, yeah. but there is also like, a, I don't know if this is a direct one-to-one, -one, but it's a criticism that I heard about some shows before I, and I'd never really thought about it. It's a couple of years ago at this point. But it's weird how many movies and shows still to represent a trans character will star a cis character mm -hmm. that then changes their gender coding. But like we put Jeffrey <sighs> Rush or Tambor, that's the one in uh, Transparent, we put it, we gave him a dress to wear. The and that's his transition. The like Dallas Buyers Club, like winning all those yes, awards. Yes, yeah, exactly. Jared Leto doing that. That was wild. And it being uh, Eddie Redmayne. Oh, Eddie Redmayne, the, the Dutch girl or something yeah, like that. It's yeah. called. And it's impressive because they're like, imagine a guy playing a damn girl. Yeah, th th this is crazy. His uh, he acted so good. And How I'm like, you okay, do well, that? like, couldn't the acting be about the actual like emotional performance and not like <laughs> yeah, the dude. like? Cause it just feels like. Yeah, I don't know if that was necessary. It'd be like if Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal in Tropic Thunder wasn't a joke. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, we need a guy that can really act black. Yeah, right. You get Bruno in on this. <laughs> Dude. Um, I don't, what, what was that line? I don't. Uh, is it from the song? Yeah. Uh, I don't derba, but a derba. There's a specific line that always gets me. Um, it's the one that echoes. I'll call them hoes and sluts. sluts Dude, that's sluts, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Boom, 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 boom. Still haven't seen the finale, huh? One day. One day. We got to watch that. Big dog. Big brother. That's me. Uh, an elder, elder millennial. <laughs> they call me the elder ring. <laughs> uh, how you doing? What's up? How's your week? I'm tired. And um, we got back from busy. Canada 
four days ago? Yeah, we got back from Canada and then I had to get back to moving. Yeah, that's right. We did like, so like we had creator clash. We did that and then I got home and then I immediately had to move. Um, and then when I moved, then we, I had like a day or two in the new place and then we went to Canada and then we just got back and then I had a little bit of, a little bit of jet lag, a tiny little bit of tiredness. Um, I ran out of my vitamin D and I haven't been taking that for like a few weeks. So I hope it didn't fuck up my levels because I need to go get blood testing again because, uh, I'm tired all the time. And so I have to figure out why, but all that being said, I'm good. You know, like things are good. Things are, things aren't too bad. Um, and that's a lot of stress um, floating around a lot of very good things. Yeah, there's just so much happening right now. Like, I hate it in a way. It's like, you know, a good problem, I suppose. But there's, I don't like being like, oh, sorry, I can't hang out because I've got like all of these things I need to do or I can't be fun or do fun things because I need to deal with my responsibilities because it's all temporary and it's all short term and these a lot of these things are one time things like getting the new place set up but um but it you know takes a toll. I don't think I could be I I would be able to do any of what I'm doing now without like our our team that like helps us with everything. So shout outs to the team. And it's nice that the things are going well too. True. It would be very frustrating to be putting all the hours in and the result be yeah, be, be net negative. But I was riding high from the birthday trip. That was super fun. Yeah, it's crazy how much. It, I feel like I say this, or one of us says it every week. But you notice how you, when you spend time with people and do nice things, it like lifts your mood. Yeah, it's like such a. It's yeah, no shit, right? Yeah, I was Maslow's yeah. pyramids of need has like yeah people in it. <laughs> not to put you on blast, but like you had expressed to me a little bit that you were like not in the best space headspace, and it was it made me really happy while we were on the trip after we like did a hang that you were like you know, it's nice to do this. And I was like, yes, I'm really glad. Like, I'm glad that this trip could be that because I needed it too. And it like really put me in a good, put me in a good mood just to be around nice people and have a good time with our friends. And the trip was your birthday present to me as well. So that felt like, a very, I don't know. I thank you so much. It, it did really help me. Um, it, it, dev, it definitely, you know, came back and all the same things are there. I got a re yeah, I got a really scary visa email yesterday. Oh. I feel like I'm in a dream. Like ever since I got it, I'm just like, it's like my, it's like I'm floating above my body. All I need is an email that says, oh, this will, this is plenty. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Something. Cause the last time I got an ambiguous, this could be a problem email. I got yeah. deported for three years. Yeah. And yeah. this is exactly the same. Right. And to get that email, like right after buying some plants, it just, uh, the worst thing about it, it makes, makes me feel like an idiot. It makes me feel like an idiot for like trying to establish myself. I feel like lawyers don't have good bedside manner. Yeah. You empathy. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, cause they're, I feel like so careful about the letter of the law uh -huh. that like, I mean, in some of the meetings that we've been on, I've, I've kind of been like, not to give specifics, but I've been like, so you're essentially saying this and we're fine. And they're like, so, uh, potentially, hypothetically, mm -hmm. that were the, you know, and it's like, okay, you don't, I'm not the a judge. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can like, you can kind of tell it to me like it is. It's like when you're on a flight and there's some like extreme turbulence or something and you can ask a flight attendant, yeah. is this like normal-ish or whatever? Right. And they're running around panickedly. I'm like, I shouldn't have to ask this. Can you get on the comms and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've had this before and not die. Right. That's because that, I'm not a pilot. That <laughs> I don't know the rules. That happened to me with like some stuff about like whether or not I was going to get the place or not, where some shit happened. And I was fortunately, I was like talking to some of like my, my people and they were like, Oh no, this happens. This happens a lot. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all good. And so my, anxiety about it was able to be like oh okay well it's a normal occur a normal possibility do you get that experience with therapy what, having kind experience? of an authority figure mm. that has been tracking your experience i, I get it with my psychiatrist specifically yeah. where i'll come in say something that's maybe clearly me spiraling about a particular topic or or getting caught up in something that's like trauma based but not necessarily grounded or real yeah 
or is a symptom of, of my medication as well. That that's always helpful. Cause yeah. I, again, I'm not a doctor, but I think being a therapist, psychiatrist, my psychiatrist is able to be like really candid and just say, mm-hmm. no, that's like not real. Yeah. Well, the thing you're having is you actually have too high a dosage. My therapist you. does do that from time to time. I am thinking recently though, that I might need to change therapists because I like my therapist, but I don't know that I'm like getting much out of therapy right now. And they're not a patron. Mm, yeah, nor do I think they listen. So fingers mm. crossed, they shouldn't be listening. But even if they were, I would but have this conversation with their face. It'd be nice if they signed up at patreon.com slash sadboys at the $5 level to get a, like, an entire did, like, extra episode every week. I was like, they don't understand that they get an entire episode <laughs> every week. What a, a full stupid episode. asshole. <laughs> like they listen to this episode, they listen to this podcast all the time. And then there's double that. Huh? We're going on 10. And yet? Right now, 10 bonus episodes. 10 hours. 10 hours. Of Sadboy's content with various guests. And frankly, it's way better. It's so much better. We get to let loose. <laughs> we can say all the slurs. Oh, You know yeah. the ones. Some of the new ones. Some of the new. <laughs> we got new technology. A blip. Oh, what oh, could that hey, mean? Hey, hold on. Bleep uh, it. Sorry. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apologies to the blur ops. <laughs> hey, dude, brother. My blipples. Bleep it, please. <laughs> Bliffle, please. But yeah, you might change. Um. Yeah, it's just like, I'm sure other people have had this experience where like finding a therapist is like dating, where you have to like talk to people and like kind of tell your whole life story. I One of my least favorite things is like meeting with a new therapist and being like, okay, so I've done a lot of work on myself. And I'm just going to give you the oral history of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to have to catch up. And I don't like that because you starting from zero, like the main benefit I get out of therapy now is the longitudinal value of having someone go, oh, four years ago, you had this problem. Yeah. Tracking is the helpful part. Yeah. That's actually huge. I've only had two psychiatrist and one was literally for like three months before I moved from San Francisco to LA. And then it's just been the one I have right now the whole time. Yeah. But I did have uh, some remote therapy deep during COVID because my psychiatrist is very expensive. Yeah. I I didn't have the money to fuck around with that. And it is, it was dog shit. (laughs) Like it was, and not only were they unable to kind of connect the dots or get engaged and they were just giving me platitudes. When we wrapped up the first session, they sent me an email suggesting that I read Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Dude, I've been hearing more like from friends about shitty therapists. And if you have a bad therapist, like you have my permission to change. Yeah. <laughs> because I was talking to a different friend whose therapist was like, like they were talking about how they have trauma around, let's say it was like, around like bodies of water okay. or something like, like this is not their real problem, but I'm trying to give an example. So it was like, I have trauma around large bodies of water and they were like, Oh, well I've got some good beach recommendations that are good. And it's like, no, what? let's talk about the trauma that I have. And it's like, weirdly, like there weren't like keyed in to like what the actual issue was. And they were like staying very surface level. Do you like Dasani more? <laughs> no, it was like, and it was like, they felt like their therapist was not even paying attention to them. Yeah. And or, or listening to them. And to the credit of my therapist, I think they're good at listening to me, but I don't feel like they challenge me. And I think I may need to seek out a different style of therapy. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that my, um, my therapist is like CBT, you know, pilled. And, uh, there's a lot of other schools of thought out there. One of, one of our friends is, uh, or one of my friends actually, cause you guys haven't met, but is a, like doing their PhD in psychology. And she was talking to me about some different therapies that might be beneficial. And I think I'm just like open to, you know, I got into therapy because I wanted to like, like feel better and like improve my dialogue with myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've stagnated on that. And I've started to dread going to therapy because it feels like I'm just telling stories and changing lives, but it feels like I'm just goofing. Destroying guilds. (laughs) Yeah. Destroying guilds. Also. Yeah. You know, WGA strong, by the way, like, yeah, uh, I, it, it's unbelievable that we were like just talking about the like Darman working conditions and they're like not non-union stuff. Mm-hmm. And then there's like 
the writer strike that's happening now, um, and we're definitely in solidarity with the the writers. They deserve more of a share of the work that they do. If you want to notice how embarrassing the studios are being, they're complaining about writer strikes being too prevalent. The last one was in two thousand and seven. Yeah, <laughs> so but it shortened too. the season of Lost that was airing at that time, and it was actually fourteen episodes instead of the planned twenty four. Um, twenty two. Quantum of Solace was mid. Yeah, actually, God. How is that fair on me? Yeah, heroes did not recover from the writer's strike, okay? Okay, well, now we're now we're touching real shit. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, okay. now it's getting real. Um, yeah, I mean, if you need a better example, Jesus. That was, Heroes was genuinely a great show. People, I think, undervalue writers. They seem to think of guilds as this privilege that the cream of the crop would like access to. Yeah. As opposed to just being a very basic right that makes life sustainable. In the, yeah, and they, they're, like, the, they're, is so much like value in the collective bargaining that these you know unions do to make it so that the people doing their job day in and day out are protected and and have access to the right you know health care and amenities and pay you know to to live on and i think the complaints of the writers you know it's like i can't like i'm not uh, the most like i i'm not a part of the skill so i can't really speak to like truly you know what all of their talking points are but my understanding is like you know more uh uh uh, residual pay they're not seeing the because that was basically stripped away with streaming yeah so streaming is like a big part of like what's happening there and then there's like these concerns about ai and clamping down Mm -hmm. on like you know how much of these studios are you know writing scripts with ai and then having writers come in and like you know fix them very i think maybe one of the most reasonable obvious i mean all of them are reasonable all the all the requests slash demands the the most one of the no-brainers to me is that the writers individually want to be able to opt out of having their work used to train AI. Oh, huge. Which is like, yeah, man, it's my script. What yeah, are you talking dude, about? Imagine, like, because it's very easy to imagine if that were done off of one person. Like, for example, did you hear that AI Drake song? Yes. Um, I actually haven't heard it, but I don't think we can play it because of uh, DMCA. But One of his best. Um, but I do kind of want to listen to it myself. Drake, AI. Was it like featuring The Weeknd? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the real one. <laughs> Not AI. I know Anthony Fantano said it was kind of good, which, but he was also saying it's a problem. Like he was saying, oh yeah, it's a bad thing that it is decent. Is this the song? Is it called "Hard on My Sleeve"? Yeah. God, that's a really good Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, this song is kind of a banger, and that's a problem. <laughs> that test fight is too good. Yeah, it's a problem. It's too good. Because I'm also like, okay, this was probably not written by an AI. But the issue is that we have a combination of factors. We have like, you know, you can train AIs to write in the style. You can now train AI voice models if you have a bunch of voice examples to sound like a person. And who do we have a lot of voice examples of? Uh, every popular musician. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? So it, it's like, um, it's definitely something that like the regulation is going to need to speed up. And, and it's all, this has always been a problem because when a new technology like comes around that's unregulated and there's a huge like sort of gold rush of profit, um, it takes for ever for the actual government to like catch up and regulate because the Mm -hmm. people doing that regulation are old farts and they don't have their thumb on the pulse of society. They don't listen to AI the weekend or whatever. And the process for doing things is so slow. And it's so slow and it's built to not change the status quo. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And that's how you get like big tech or whatever. That's how you get like Uber growing to be this gigantic company and sort of like stomping around uh government legislation because the worst that can happen is they get fined a few million dollars after making billions yeah that's what disruption is that's that term is so prolific because it's just doing something mostly legal yeah that isn't properly tracked while you can yeah doing something unregulated as fast (laughs) as possible while the regulations you know, it's like you're the weekend in a Corvette driving, and uh, no, you're you're in a Ford F one fifty on the fucking <laughs> on the on a California highway, and the police are chasing you. Except for uh, the weekend is the tech industry disrupting, and the 
cops are the government. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, I don't know. And they take a wrong turn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it's know. A, this is like an AI generating an analogy. Yeah, no that's, I asked ChatGPT to formulate that one for me. By the way, if your instinct as a listener or person just like aware of this happening is to say, well, it's like there's personal responsibility or like you should just have... Just learn to stop, code. Stop holding back progress or whatever. You're a libertarian psychopath. <laughs> like that is a way that that's some Ayn Rand psycho mm. bullshit. That is like, it's for the same token, then we shouldn't, people shouldn't get in trouble for not wearing seatbelts. Yeah. That is like, yeah, it's not optimal to waste time putting on the seatbelt when I could be driving to work. Speed limits is not letting me get anywhere quick enough. Yeah. It's just like, no, come on, man. You know that not everybody can be personally responsible for that. You know that like, it's a meritocracy, man. The writers should just get bigger, higher paying jobs. Yeah, they, well, they should just move into Mr. Beast Town. They should go into big steel production. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the yeah why don't you just make time. cars? Wait, why don't we start a town, call it Detroit. Right. Make a big car factory. <laughs> okay, they did this. They did this like so long ago. I what? Feel like. It's okay. You it's know, my they, idea. You're going to be so embarrassed. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Detroit 2, man. Detroit 2. Come on. Cars. Extra Do we cars, have boogaloo, cars? dude. <laughs> um, so the you hear about the Mr. Beast stuff? Well, new, so he's done a couple things. He, new capital D discourse with yeah, Jimmy. The, he's cured a few more ailments. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His New Testament list of miracles is like growing. Yeah. his thumbnails, his demonic thumbnails, bro. I haven't. Um, people said that he's like making them so that people can put themselves in to react, and I kind of think there's oh. validity to that. Because there's all the space on the left side of the thumbnail. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, he's that's his like tra his his work and trade, right? It's three key features mm -hmm. in the thumbnail. Yeah. And I guess that is missing one. You. It's missing you. Get in there. No um, matter who you are, get in there. start react. your reaction channel. I get a lot of DMs that are like, hey, how do I do commentary? You just pop yourself on a Mr. Beast thumbnail and you hit record. Be wacky and then get like a, a talented editor to make it cogent. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. Get, do lots of lots of drone footage. Do it like Casey Neistat in 2015. It would be so funny to do a commentary channel, whole channel, but it's only via drone. And because oh, yeah. of audio reasons, it has to be like what if we did commentary away? videos like a Mr. Beast video? Like, what's up, guys? Today we're gonna talk about Shane Dawson's new video. Do you think that this one is the odd one out? Which one of them is black? Okay, mean? guys, I think that Jared is black because wait, I can see him. Hold on, <laughs> yeah, with my eyes, with my eyes. So I, I mean, I think that this Mr. Beast thing, uh, obviously the optics are like bad. It like it's you know. Uh, I know a lot of people are comparing it to company talents. A lot of people are comparing it to feudalism. Um, was there any, I mean, is there more nuance to the story other than he just bought some houses that were for sale for his staff? Uh, I don't think that they were all for sale. I think he like tried to get the owners of the houses to sell them. Um, and it, and it says for staff and family, I don't know. And then we don't know if like he owns the houses or if he bought them on behalf, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause there's a difference because like if it's going to be like a lords and vassal situation where yeah and um, if you're you're dependent on having that job yeah for yeah the yeah sake if you're dependent housing. on having the job um so i think that there's just like not enough information to like really cast judgment other than to say like the optics look bad and that's what that's what twitter cares about and so like <laughs> yeah sure like so you can just like make the take i mean like i just i mean like it it d definitely doesn't sound good and i think that there's a lot of stuff about like that environment that I haven't heard the best things about. So, you know, I will certainly not in defense of Mr. Beast, but I think more just one of the phenomena that follows him around and is, I think, the cause of a lot of these, again, capital D discourses. There are a lot of keywords in that story that I think are triggering for people. Mm -hmm. There's Jimmy. His mm -hmm. kind of classic brand of so and so. Well, because like you see a Mr. Beast headline and you're like, okay, what's my yeah. hot take to farm Let's have to a farm look. engagement? Yeah. And then landlord sure. is another keyword you can put in there. Yeah. Company town, a reference that maybe make people unsettled, even sure. as an idea. Buying a house, something Buying that's not accessible houses. to like most people. It's just like a very online lib behavior to kind of go off aesthetics like not really think about the why or the how of something, mm -hmm. but more just the kind of like the cosmetic elements of something bad. Yeah. Like, or like when, you know, Joe Biden had big red lights behind him. 
Everyone was like, the rise of Dark yeah, Brandon. Yeah, it's exactly. like, that's just a camera angle. There's blue to the right or whatever, right? Yeah. I understand. I understand the desire for some nice plug and play opinions, mm -hmm. but I, I'm sure there's nuance beyond this. And, and I'll also say, like, I'm not by any means an expert on like the nuances of what purchasing large portions of land uh, does to like the surrounding economy yeah, exactly. and, and how that impacts that. But I, I'm hesitant to get too judgmental on something that like, it, I feel my bias kicking in. I right. feel my, my socialist instincts kicking in and being yeah. like, a guy bought a bunch of houses to house his staff. What is yeah. he, the damn king? And the, I just don't know. The, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I also like... I feel like he already owned a bunch of houses in this neighborhood and the story is about him buying a couple more. And so I think that like it's partially old news, which is why maybe I kind of wasn't surprised by it, but maybe that's why I just like don't have the, like I'm not able to judge it objectively. I wouldn't say that Twitter is judging it objectively. I think that like, I feel like the stuff on the internet, you always have to view it through the lens of like, it's hard to find a, someone who is posting with the earnest goal of sharing information. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like oftentimes you're posting for engagement. I'm posting for engagement. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, and it's like not not to say that everyone's doing what I'm doing, but, you know, P Dexerto needs to get clicks or whatever. That's like why they run these stories where the actual body of the – it's like it's a headline and then like a paragraph. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, what's the use case where somebody's posting anything on Twitter without the intent to get attention on it? Right. It would literally be someone who's like, I just need to let people know. It would be pointless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially like you want to let people know, but you don't want to have a lot of people see it. Yeah, there's just no, I, and this is not even, yeah, again, like a judgment. Even if I post something non shit posty, I do want it to get attention. Yeah. I mean, if you're like, hey, doing. there's like a sale on switches at my local right. Best Buy, like you're, I mean, maybe that's for cloud, but you could also want to like do a service. I don't yeah. know. I think that certainly someone could not have nefarious intentions sure, yeah. when it comes to posting online. And I don't think I have nefarious intentions when posting online, but I have to acknowledge that, especially for like a news outlet who's paying the $1,000 a month to get a gold check mark they uh you know have to get that their their game is engagement sure plus it, yeah i mean hey because otherwise there's no point to this it's a story worth selling i don't think it's keeping jimmy up at night or anything like that no. and i don't think it's beyond criticism because it is again it's demonic it's it's icky it, yeah. that's that's like his curse really, certainly so doesn't, much of the stuff he does. but i feel like the extent of it is well this certainly doesn't sound good yeah print let's yeah, Let's you know? put it on ice from there. Because yeah. I also, I don't, you know, it's not necessarily a bad idea to keep an eye on, yeah, who owns these houses and what, what, what obligation do they have to be good peasants for Jimmy? Otherwise, they lose their house. Is yeah. it their house? Is there a payment plan? How does this work? Yeah. But keeping an eye out doesn't also mean like preemptively just telling it, saying it's bad. Yeah. Plus, hey, man, again not an expert in anything to do. I just don't know. Yeah, that. I'm not an expert either. I don't know the dominoes. I think it's any. like, I would certainly need more information. And it feels like this this headline is for the sake of clicks because it, when you actually click into it, you get like a bunch of question marks and, a, and a, a few pull quotes from people who lived in the neighborhood who talk about like, well, he had to make it worth my while or whatever. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so there's not really much here. Uh, that's the other question mark, I guess, is like, yeah, what was the method... Is it one of those, uh, the the big wig in town wants to destroy the rec center so he can build a parking lot? Right, or was it right. a, like, he gave us an incredibly good offer because yeah. he just wanted... Yeah, I mean, and obviously, like, we could debate the merits of, like, yeah, Mr. Beast owning a neighborhood. Um, but we don't even know, like, truly, like, don't even know if he owns the neighborhood or if he gifted the houses, because he's also gifted houses a lot. Mm -hmm. And you could, you know, I, I would not be surprised if, it was in the business interest of Mr. Beast to like buy a house on behalf of some of his like higher ups. You know, it's like, we've heard stories about people who climb the ranks of like Mr. Beast org and like, he wants to have more access to you. And so like, he'll give you more, you know, stuff as a result, like I showering mean, can, you in gifts. No part of me thinks that there's like a deep and nefarious purpose to doing it in the first place. It's literally just to like, well, I work with all these people. Yeah, he's I, like I, efficiency pilled for just sure. Just put them in a place together. In the same way yeah. that, you know, uh, yeah, I made a thumbnail where there's a little boy crying. Yeah. Just knowing that, like not understanding why that's creepy. It was interesting to see that thumbnail change a bunch to like different mm. boys crying. 
<laughs> Who's your favorite kind of boy? Yeah, I was like, well, this one's a person of color. He's a little boy of color, and he's crying. Do you guys like that? Yeah. Was, I think, yeah, he changed the thumbnail like three or four times. I'm going to get him some shoes. I'll do whatever you slightly, want. Slightly. Um, was that one on his phil- philanthropy channel? There was one on his philanthropy channel about prosthetics, I think. Oh, that's what that one was on. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah. But not the... The hearing curing one. blindness one. I right? think that was on curing blindness was on main. Interesting. And then I think cure the hearing um, aid one was on main. He's made such an iconic smile that is more like a grimace. He looks like the grimace emoji. His iconic thumbnail grimace. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah. It's almost like he's going like, I don't know. <laughs> is this okay? <laughs> what did uh? Oh, you sent me a clip. Oh yeah, I did. Do you want to set this up? Yeah, so there's nothing to do with this. (laughs) Like, there's no interesting insights to happen. The two most annoying people on the internet, or in media in general, Elon Musk and Bill Maher. Oh, Bill Maher. Yeah, which actually genuinely sounds like if somebody wanted to give me, like, Guantanamo white torture, just play Bill Maher and I will lose my sense of self and I'll just, like, give up all of my homies or whatever. He really annoys me. He is a truly despicable person and... uh, that clip where he drops the N-word is, is uh, kind of amazing to watch I, still. I, Not that long ago. I don't even, yeah, I didn't even know that was a, I think maybe I have seen that though. It's rough. It's a, what, what a little treat. <laughs> uh, but Treat yourself after the show. This is a very recent, this is what, like two, day, two weeks ago? Before listening to our days. Patreon exclusive episode. Check, maybe we listen to it there. Maybe we don't want, won't tell you. Uh, <laughs> no, we've got a good story to talk about on that one. We'll tell you about it in a sec. This but. clip is Elon Musk. Who and you know it's so much deference from soy Bill Maher, you know, just being like, "You're actually epic bacon swag." Oh. I I think you're actually pretty goaded with the sauce, you know, just buttering right. him up. Elon Musk jumps in with one of just the worst jokes I've ever heard, and they have to applaud. Okay, here we go. These people who deal the cards and I deal some memes too. <laughs> yes, we do. Some. Uh... Um, (laughs) near the moment the clap light comes on wait 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 wait. yeah so he says you're one of the few people that deals the cards so he's saying he's like a kingmaker elon musk he's like one of these like guys who who's got a lot of power and then he says i deal some memes too (laughs) what wait was he opening his jacket to be like i've got some memes in here oh is that the i think that's his bit some uh (laughs) <laughs> some uh yeah he's doing it what is he's like <laughs> no i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't i can show you any of my memes no i can't show you any of my like highly super compressed facebook meme of a, a blue head that i stole from the top reply to my previous tweet yeah on, on nine gag dude he is cracking up the pop again you can hear exactly when the neon clap sign goes yeah, on. yeah, yeah. it's like oh um okay um, so about your memes. <laughs> so, um, how up. do they help you combat the woke mind virus? Yeah. Thanks for fighting back with, uh, like a picture of Squidward and he's playing his clarinet and saying that, um, you know, feminism's bad. Dude, isn't Bill Maher the guy who's like, I mean, look, I've been liberal for my whole life, but yeah. the, the pronouns these days are just so bad. He's dad lib. That's oh like his whole God. code. Yeah. He's a, uh, Obama skeptic, but still votes for him. That kind of thing. Okay. You know. And he would have voted for a third Show time. me the birth certificate, but we deserve to see it. So the, we're about at time for this episode because we've got to go to right here and record a full and complete bonus extra special episode. Homies Patreon only. style. Homies only. Homies only on patreon.com slash sadboys. It's a little show we call Sad Boys Nights. We have a salacious story to tell. Okay, so on today's Patreon episode, we so we were in Toronto with our good friends Curtis Connor, Danny Gonzalez. We're in the six. We were in the six with our woes, and rolling through it, in fact. And uh, we took a limo, you know, like a birthday limo. We took birthday, like a birthday limo to karaoke. Got back uh, to Curtis's place at like one a.m., two a.m. in the morning. And find out that we need to pay in cash for this limousine. And uh, it's 2 a.m. in the morning and uh, we don't have any cash. We go on a little adventure. And we go on a little adventure. And we'll tell you about that adventure. Curtis says some wild stuff. Danny Gonzalez (laughs) is there too. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, well, you'll find out the conclu- thrilling conclusion of that story on patreon.com slash sadboys. Bang. Um, but we end every episode of Sadboys with a particular phrase. We love you. And we're sorry. Boom. Boom. So we got bullied by a limo driver. Pam. Poor Pam. Curtis is like, I would like to pay now. She was like, yeah, that'll be some amount of Canadian dollars cash. And the world said there's no way for us to acquire cash at 2 a.m. It felt like a prank. In the local area, all the ATMs are closed. We say, follow me. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving girl? Moving girl, how she dead looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, how you want it? Guys, you wish for me.